name is Oliver Schmidtgent. I'm a professor in political science and history at the University of Victoria, where I also direct the Center for Global Studies. And let me reflect a bit on the trajectory of my own professional career in the broader field of European studies. When I started studying the European Union and the process of European integration more broadly, I've always been struck by an historically unprecedented attempt to establish something that you could call a post-national, a European form of political community that goes beyond the traditional nation-state as it was established by the Westphalian Peace Treaty. And this is something that, if you think historically, um, is something that is new charted territory. You know, we have an emergent sense of a collective identity at the supranational level, and with it also socio and political processes of a supranational government structure and a true sense of a political community that goes beyond our traditional borders. But also very concretely, if you think about one of the key achievements of the European Union, the freedom to move from one country to the other, uh, the, the freedom to take up residence and work in other countries, it instills a sense of a shared destiny across national borders that um, clearly today is somewhat challenged, but it is still at the core of what the European Union proposes to do. And some of the promises also in terms of reinventing our imagined community. This, however, also means that we need to have an approach to, to managing diversity, immigration, cross-border mobility, and diversity. And here, for me, uh, my Canadian experience comes in. Canada has a long-standing uh, tradition of welcoming huge numbers of immigrants, but also managing the internal diversity with its policy of multiculturalism. Europe is on the verge of addressing these kind of issues of, and learning from the Canadian context. How do we do this? How do we deal uh, with a sense of community for which diversity, ethnic, cultural, religious plurality is a defining mark? And we see at the moment in Europe there's lots of resistance to this. But I think we can learn from the Canadian experience and see what has worked you know, since Canada introduced its multicultural policy and is there something that could be used for the European context. But there's also another learning process you know, to look at Europe at the moment, what is happening in terms of a re-nationalization of the discourse, of the rebirth of nativist ideologies that push back against exactly this notion that Europe is going towards a transnational, highly diverse uh, sense of community. And this is something here in the Canadian context that we can see some of the elements of the populist nationalist right that see immigration as a main threat to society have also arrived in North America, very prominently in the US, but also here in Canada. So in a way, my comparative perspective allows me to look into the politics of immigration and see how certain suggestions of dealing with diversity, um, with refugees, with border management are being addressed uh, here in Canada and in the EU and what we can learn and where there is um, the potential for comparing best practices and learning l l about the long-term trajectory of dealing with this allegedly and you know, clearly difficult um, political issue in a comparative perspective.